Here in Washington, we've been really focused on the 2020 presidential campaign, but it's not just national politics that have a sweeping impact. State races often have a trickle-up effect. KB, I know that you took a road trip this weekend to Kentucky. You had an eye out for a pretty contentious governor's race there. What happened on the scene? Well, this weekend, I was on the ground in Louisville, where I love Kentucky, at the Teamsters Local 783 Union Hall, where area Democrats gathered for one of the last rallies for the Democratic ticket before Tuesday's big gubernatorial election. All eyes, of course, are on the top of the ticket, where incumbent Republican Governor Matt Bevin is facing off against the current Attorney General Andy Bashir. Now, Bevin has really tied himself closely to President Trump, and Trump is, of course, still very popular in the state. But that may not be what matters to Kentucky voters. Take a listen. It's an energy that's ready to do on November the 5th what I did in our last five debates, and that's beat Matt Bevin. Yeah! Here at Teamsters Local 783 in Louisville, Kentucky, these local Democrats have come out on a Saturday to support their guy in his bid for governor. Kentucky Attorney General Andy Bashir, son of former Kentucky Governor Steve Bashir, stumps for votes in the final days of his quest for the governor's office. I spoke to him right after he addressed the crowd. All right, so what do you think it comes down to? Well, we're excited. All across this Commonwealth, we see a special energy like none I have seen before. And it's people that um, want a governor that will address those issues that keep them up at night. Here in Kentucky, that's public education, pensions, health care, and jobs. They've got a governor that has spent four years tearing down public education and ripping people off of their health care. They're going to get a governor that is laser focused on meeting their needs, on addressing those anxieties and moving all of our families forward. What do you make of the fact that the president's coming into the, into the state on Monday? Well, Matt Bevin, our governor, has a disastrous record of tearing people off of health care, of attacking our educators, of trying to illegally cut pensions. He knows he can't win on that disastrous record, so he's trying to hide behind anybody he can. Now, uh, you used to only have four years to serve as governor in Kentucky, and the fact that he can't run on his record and his record alone is why he shouldn't be reelected to another term. And last question for you. For folks walking, watching nationally, they look at Kentucky as a Republican state, you know, it's supportive of the president, et cetera. Why would a Democrat have a shot here? Well, we had a Democratic governor just four years ago. And we had a Democratic House just three years ago. I believe the people of Kentucky are going to come out and vote for someone that will fight for them every single day, uh, that wants to lift up public education, ensure every child gets a world-class education, that wants to ensure everybody has affordable and accessible health care, that they can afford their insulin for the 600,000 diabetics in Kentucky. And they want someone that keeps their promises and keeps their word. All right. Thank right. you, Attorney okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Good you. to see you, Chris. Bashir is working hard to secure votes in the final days. He knows President Trump is popular in these parts. The president plans a visit here Monday to help boost the Republican incumbent. Bashir secured backing from this Teamsters local early on in the race. Now, were you all the first union to endorse Attorney General Andrew Bashir? Yeah, it was about three and a half years ago. We were at a Kentucky Labor Conference down in uh, Western Kentucky. And we were on stage and I was listening to what was going on and what he had been fighting for. And I reached over and whispered to him. I said, you need to run for governor. He laughed. He goes, are you serious? And I said, yeah. And then he kind of looked back at me. He goes, well, don't say nothing just yet, but I'm thinking about it. I said, well, you need to. And I said, I'll endorse you. He goes, seriously? And I said, yes. So it took me about six more months to working with him, but I think he had it in his mind, but we were the first union to endorse him. And what was it he said that you found so compelling? He made it where to bring back the values of Kentucky. Kentucky a lot of times gets labeled, you know, backwoods and all that kind of stuff, but we're actually a caring state and we're a little bit better off than what people seem to think sometimes. But I, I could see it, he had a little bit of his dad in him, but he also had the part that public sector employees, people should be treated with dignity, they should have respect, they should be promised their pensions, they should have access to health care. And it's just a lot of stuff, and I, I just felt that he cared for Kentucky, and he is a Kentucky, and he understands our values. Like, you know, Kentucky's a little bit different in certain areas, but at the end of the day, we try to look out for each other, and that's what I liked about him. And Matt Bevins, the incumbent Republican governor, um, he's, he's not really highly rated in terms of his popularity. Why do you think that is? Republican governor, state that leans right, why is he not widely liked here? He's a bully. He tries to intimidate people. He talks down. When you tell public sector employees and teacher, teachers that they're scrounge on the citizens of Kentucky and that they're thugs and, and stuff like that, that hits a chord after a while. And then when you tell them they're going to lose their pensions and that they're they, they don't deserve what they have and that we're going to allow kids to be raped or kids to be murdered or silly stuff like that. 
because every citizen has the right to exercise their voice and what they're concerned about at the Capitol, the Capitol is ours. It's not his. He's made it his. So when we marched on that, and, and different things he says like that, you're going to take 400,000 people off Medicare in order for them to have health care, and that, that's wrong, and that's not Kentucky values. Incumbent Governor Matt Bevin is deeply disliked here in Kentucky. His attacks on teacher pensions, attempts to end the Medicaid expansion that greatly benefited the state, and disparaging remarks about educators have hurt him with voters. Those factors have given the Democrat, Bashir, pretty solid footing in this race. So you represent a district here in Louisville. What is the energy in your neighborhood with regards to this governor's race coming up? Working class people I represent have been really harmed by Governor Bevin's policies. They've been directly affected, whether they are a teacher or a police officer or firefighter. They've been harmed by policies. They've been harmed by his rhetoric. And, you know, quite frankly, they've just had enough. They, they believe him when he says that he wants to cut their health care, when he wants to cut their pension benefits, when he calls them in ignorant or uh, lashes out for fighting back at what he's tried to propose. So, you know, they're ready to vote on Tuesday. Yeah. Well, the president's coming, as you know, on Monday. I mean, what, what impact do you think that has? Well, he's coming to Lexington and not Louisville. I think his visit will have a great impact in Lexington. We, we saw that in 2018 when he came for Congressman Andy Barr in that area as well. And I, I think our Democratic candidate was doing pretty well there at the time. And then uh, after the Trump visit, lost some ground in that race and Congressman Barr was ultimately reelected. So there's no doubt that a Trump visit uh, bumps us down a little bit, maybe in our uh, urban region in Lexington and maybe even a little bit in, in the rural areas surrounding that area. But I think Jefferson County, especially where I represent, is going to come out very strong. And if they can come out strong enough, they can um, undo some of the damage of, uh, you know, some of the, the wave effect that Trump seems to have in Kentucky. But Bashir's backers are taking nothing for granted in this very tight contest. Well, we've been crisscrossing the state these last few days on this amazing bus tour, trying to energize our base, and it really hasn't been a whole lot of work because we have seen the energy before we've even gotten into these small towns. And it's important to us to get out to rural Kentucky. That's why we were in eastern Kentucky all day today, going into places where a lot of candidates hadn't gone before. We've even been in western Kentucky, and we're going back there again, making sure that people in rural Kentucky feel like their voice counts. And I tell you, it is standing room only where we're going. We think that people are more engaged than ever, and we believe that we will see a higher engagement at the polls than what has been predicted on November 5th. And what do you attribute that energy to? What's motiva motivating people? I think there are a multitude of reasons that we see a lot of energy. You know, of course, the national conversation drives some of that, but the statewide conversation, we talk about teachers. You know, the teachers are going to be the backbone of bringing out the vote in this election, talking about their pension and talking about the degradation of their very profession. Um, which has happened over the last few years. We're talking about working families. You talk about organized labor. And for me, we're talking about the right to vote. So we've seen some activity across the country, which has caused a lot of us concern. And as we move toward trying to preserve that right to vote, people are waking up to some of those realities. And I do think, and I attribute a lot of that too, to social media. People are talking today in ways they've never talked before. And we're starting to see that energize at the ground level. Bevin's team isn't taking anything for granted either. But will the president's visit be enough to pull him over the finish line? Now, on the other hand, President Trump is very popular here still. Um, what do you hear from your members about him? We've had a few here lately have come back. They said they voted for him because they liked his rhetoric and that he was going to drain the swamp and he was going to be unconventional. But they're starting to see that's not true. What he's done is he's hurt the middle class and lower income and his tax credits and all that has benefited the rich. It hasn't benefited the poor. And they're starting to see it, but they're kind of slow. They still want to believe. And that, you know, the, the promise he, you know, he promised that he was going to take care of, and he hasn't done that. And I think it's starting to resonate. Are, are you worried about the impact of him coming to the state on Monday? No, because I think if he was really, if he really wanted Matt Bevins to win, he would have came in two weeks ago. I think what he's doing is covering his own rear end that, you know, hey, I endorse this guy, but you don't come in the night before the election if you really believe this guy was going to win. You come in two weeks before, you think he had a shot, you come in then. But he's coming in, I think it's just his self-interest. He's going to say, I did my best to elect Matt Bevins. And like everything else, if it doesn't work, he's going to say he's a horrible politician. I've done my best and I try to help him. At least one big politico knows that turnout will be key. 
and he hopes that enthusiasm is on the side of Bashir. So big election here on Tuesday, an incumbent Republican Matt Bevin versus the current Attorney General Andy Bashir. What do you think? It's going to be a very close race. Um, I think there is probably a slight um, enthusiasm advantage for uh, Andy Bashir. The people I know who are for Bevin are not really excited about Matt Bevin. Has, <clears throat> as most people know, he is uh, one of the least popular governors uh, in his or her state in the country. Yeah. And uh, he was elected with only 17% of registered voters' votes uh, four years ago. So it, it's really kind of hard to tell where Matt Bevin's base is and, again, whether there's much enthusiasm for him. But uh, it's still going to be, it's a Republican state, it's still going to be a close election and turnout will decide it. So what impact might this race have on a national scale? On Tuesday, if uh, Andy Bashir and the rest of the Democratic ticket wins, what do you think the message is for Democrats nationally? When we win this race, I don't want to say if, when we win this race, it'll be a message to the rest of the country. If Kentucky, a so-called red state, can see that the lies and the deceit and what's went wrong and how it's hurting our economy, how it's hurting our people and our families, then maybe the rest of the country will wake up and understand it. So to give you a little bit of backstory here, Sagar, that, that colors the whole thing. So last time, last gubernatorial election, when Bevin ended up winning, all the polls had the Democrat, Jack Conway, right. up by nine and 10 I remember. points. They yeah. thought it was a gimme and then people didn't show up. And Bevin, so the polls had Conway up 10 points. Bevin ends up winning by, I think, nine or 10 points. So it was like a 20 point poll shift. So even though a lot of the polls have shown Andy Bashir up or at least even, people are incredibly nervous. I will tell you that they told me that he has the best ground game that they've seen in years. They, you know, driving around Louisville, of course, Louisville's his stronghold. There are um, anti Matt Bevin, pro Bashir signs everywhere. But uh, this one is a really tough one to call. Yeah, and I mean, it was a really interesting package the whole thing you put together all the all these people obviously you have your own roots in the state and I think that's the real key is that this more than anything is if Democrats are ever going to win power back in some of these swing states this is how it's going to happen right it's not about abolishing the electoral college it's about appealing to people who generally can be swing voters and you know the unpollable that came out for Matt Bevin and by 10 percentage point in those polls how do you think that happened much of these people are completely forgotten and I think that um, I think that this this really illustrates a very different type of policy in this country that needs to be a lot more highlighted. Yeah, I think it will. And look, it is a little bit of a warning sign for the president if he goes there and his guy still yeah, loses. It would be bad. Bevin has run yeah. his whole campaign on I am Donald Trump, I am Donald Trump's friend. Don Jr. has been there. Mike Pence has already been there. So people will be watching this one closely. And the flip side, when Bevin did win in 2015, he's this outsider, businessman, saying things that you're not really supposed to say in politics. In some ways, it was a canary in the coal mine, yeah. presaging Trump and, like you said, the polls being wrong. So there's a lot to look at here. Absolutely. It's always fun to be there. All right, different voices talking about the presidential campaign have become, of course, an essential part of the campaign process. From radio on the right to YouTube on the left, people come to vent and look for answers. In my recent trip to Politicon, I talked to YouTuber and friend of the show, Kyle Kalinske, about his sh how his voice has impacted the media landscape. And of course, we talked about the 2020 campaign too. That interview, When Rising, continues.